Okay, so we will be talking about the neurocutaneous disorders. It's a comparatively high yield topic for the USMLE least step one. Um, I know a lot of students find it extremely difficult to remember each and every point in this table over here, but I will try to make it as easy as possible by mentioning the high yields, the extremely high yields, which um, I'm going to uh, outline so that it gets really easy when we're doing a quick review. So the neurocutaneous disorders present with uh, five disorders over here, which is your Sturge Weber syndrome, tuberous sclerosis, neurofibromatosis type one, type two, and the von hippel lindau disease. The first disorder we will talk about is the Sturge Weber syndrome. It's the one over here. Uh, what we have to realize with tables like this is um, the question will usually present with uh, this presentation over here and you have to realize that your answers lie somewhere over here, sometimes over here, but in most cases uh, they ask you what the reason is and this is your answer and this is the presentation which the question will present with and then you have to come to a diagnosis that the syndrome is a Sturge Weber syndrome and uh, the reason is from over here. Okay, so let's start. So Sturge Weber syndrome occurs due to a congenital non hereditary anomaly of a neural crest derivatives. And uh, it, it occurs due to a somatic mosaicism of an activating mutation in one copy of the GNAQ gene. So uh, in these two sentences over here, uh, the highest yield sentence for Sturge Weber syndrome is this sentence over here, which is the somatic mosaicism of an activating mutation in one copy of the GNAQ gene. Somatic mosaicism is basically your post-zygotic mutation, which occurs after a zygote has already formed. And it's an activating mutation. It occurs in only one copy of the GNAQ gene. So that basically you have to remember four things. Somatic mosaicism, activating mutation, one copy of the GNAQ gene. Now let's try to uh, remember how uh, the question will present with. The question will usually try to paint a scenario of, uh, let's say, a child who will come with a port wine stain on the division of the ophthalmic and the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, along with, let's say, seizure or intellectual disability, usually due to a neurological tumor. So that's basically your neurocutaneous di disorders. As a whole, you have a neurological tumor associated with acutaneous disease. So in case of Sturge Weber syndrome, uh, the neurological tumor, which um, the patients usually have is ipsilateral leptomeningeal angioma, which is in B over here. And this leads to seizure, epilepsy, and intellectual disability, which is with the parents of the child will come to a physician and complain about. And when you examine the patient, you will see that the patient has a port wine stain on the division of uh, V1, V2, that is your ophthalmic and maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, as is in this picture over here in the small child. And very rarely will, uh, will you see that the question present with an episcleral hemangioma for which there is an increase in intraocular pressure and early onset of glaucoma. This is, this is not comparatively very high yield, but the highest yield points are ipsilateral leptomeningeal angioma for which your seizure and epilepsy intellectual dis disability occurs and your uh, port point stain. So uh, keep in mind that uh, the question will not mention about ipsilateral leptomeningeal angioma. What it will mention is a child with a seizure and epilepsy and uh, during examination, your findings, that is your port wine stain. So uh, if you uh, come up with a question where you see these two presentations, the first diagnosis I want you to come to is Sturge Weber syndrome. Uh, if they try to make the question uh, easy, then they will present with these two uh, symptoms and uh, the answers will contain this line over here. In most cases, um, in most uh, questions of UWorld, this is the answer, which is the somatic mosaicism of an activating mutation in one copy of the GNA gene. So this is extremely high yield. And very rarely will they ask you uh, what the disease is associated with. If, it, if that's what they ask you, if that's what they ask you, then um, the disease is associated with an episcleral hemangioma, or there might also be an answer, very rare though, 
which might contain something like an increase in intraocular pressure, which is uh, which will make the question extremely difficult and uh, very, very rare. So if you have to remember the high yields from this disease over here is your ipsilateral leptomeningeal angioma, which is your neurological tumor and your port wine stain. So you will get a question with a child going through seizure, epilepsy, and intellectual disability along with a port wine stain. And you, I want you to think about starge weber syndrome. And if everything goes accordingly, then you should be able to answer from the question, from the answers, which will contain this sentence over here, which is your somatic Muslim mosaicism of an activating mutation in one copy of the GNAQ gene. Uh, very rarely, or I've never seen any question where they say that instead of Sturge Weber syndrome, they mention encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. It's just for you to remember, not very high yield, but if you want to, that's okay. And uh, in the notes over here, they even have a small mnemonic, which is S-S-T-U-R-G-G-E, which is Sturge, with which they want you to realize that this is a sporadic uh, disease. Um, there's a port wine stain, and this is comparatively high yield tram track calcification, which is the epsilateral leptomeningeal angioma will have a tram track calcification. It's usually unilateral, not very high yield, and the patient will have um, glaucoma due to the episcleral hemangioma. So to sum up for this disease, extremely high yields for you to realize is your answer over here in most cases and your disease presentation over here, which is this, I'm sorry, um, this due to this, which is which is seizures due to ipsilateral leptomeningeal angioma and presence with a port wine stain. So this is it. Uh, this, should, this should not be very hard to remember because I mean, I have narrowed it down to uh, basically four or five things. Um, three, four things, I'm sorry, which is your answer on the left and your presentation on the right. Very rarely will they try to ask you um, if you know what other associations a dis disease has. So if they do, then this is the answer, episcleral hemangioma, the association. And if they also try to dig, uh, dig a bit deeper, then they might ask you, tram track calcifications for the epsilateral epimeningeal angioma, although I've never ever come across a question where they go this deep with Sturge Weber syndrome. So the next disease I want to go to is tuberous sclerosis, very high yield. Um, there are uh, multiple things which I want, which you have to remember for this disease because uh, it's a bit complicated and the presentations can have multiples, but the most common presentation is your renal angiomyolipoma, which is um, which is a renal uh, a benign renal tumor. Looks like this angiomyolipoma. You see your uh, you see you see your uh, lipoid clefts over here. Usually, the presentation will be somewhere like a patient comes to the physician and uh, this, 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 that, that, that. And then uh, the question will mention that the pet, that the patient has had a previous diagnosis or has a diagnosis of a renal angiomyolipoma along with seizures. And another common presentation of this disease is hamartomas in the central nervous system and skin. And uh, when you see this presentation, or these type of presentations along with your cutaneous disorders, that is your ash leaf spots, which is over here and this uh, picture D over here. And so you have your neuro neurological tumors, which is the hematomas and your cutaneous disorder, which is the ash leaf spot. And the most common presentation, which is the renal angiomyolipoma. Uh, the first diagnosis, which should come to your head is tuberous sclerosis. And uh, they will never ask you, I mean, they will, ne they will never really make it as easy by mentioning tuberous sclerosis in the answers. What they want you to uh, know is they want you to understand that the disease presents uh, as a tuberous sclerosis, as tuberous sclerosis, and they would want to know that if you know um, 
uh, why this disease occurs. So this portion of uh, the table over here for this disease is extremely important, which you have to keep in mind, which is the tumor, which is that the tuberous sclerosis is an autosomal dominant disease, occurs due to uh, variable expression, and it occurs due to a mutation in your tumor suppressor genes TSC1 on chromosome number 9, which codes for a protein hamilton and TSC2 on chromosome number 16, which codes for the protein tuberin. So uh, the way I remember TSC1 as association one chromosome number 9 is, uh, so when you try to spell out tuberous sclerosis, you have T-U-B-E-R-O-U-S, which is eight words, and then S over here. So tuberous S. Tuberous S is nine words, so tuberous S for chromosome number nine. And for TSC2, I try to I try to uh, keep him. I I try to remember TSC2 on chromosome number 16 with tuberous sclerosis. Tuberous sclerosis is 16, and TSC2. That's uh, obviously it should be. Um, I mean, uh, I mean it's not obvious, but I mean I try to realize that TSC2 should be a higher number than TSC1, so 16. So 6 is less than 9, so it's not 6, so it should be 16. So tuberous S for chromosome number 9 and tuberous sclerosis 16 for chromosome uh, for TSC2. So you have uh, this disease over here. Um, ve uh, very rarely will you have a, present, uh, a, a presentation of tuberous sclerosis where they might try to dig deeper to see if uh, you know the associations of tuberous sclerosis with other conditions, um, not conditions, I mean like other associations, which is your cardiac rhabdomyoma and mitral regurgitation and angiofibromas. Okay, so the disease will usually present with hematomas or and during a, a examination, you will get a murmur associated with a mitral re regurgitation. And during patient examination, the cutaneous disorder, which uh, they might describe as Ashley spots, which is over here, which is a hypopigmented um, spot over here. That's what they will mention. They will never mention Ashley spots. And uh, the next thing which they might ask you is, if you know that this disease is associated with renal entromyal lipoma is or not, and it is, so this is your answer. Or they might ask you why this disease is happening, which is this is uh, which uh, for which the reason is this one. That is your mutation in tumor suppressor genes, and uh, they don't really try to uh, know if you know how um, which protein this uh, gene is is associated with. But it's good for you to uh, uh, remember. If not, it's not a problem. But if you can, try to remember that TSC1 is, is um, codes for hamartin and TSC2 on chromosome number 16, it codes for the protein tuberin. So uh, that's that. And let's move on to number three, which is your neurofibromatosis type 1. And then you have your neurofibromatosis type 2. Okay. So you, you, it's a uh, type 1 is an autosomal dominant 100% penetrance. Um, it's a mutation in the NF1 tumor suppressor gene on chromosome number 17, and it encodes for neurofibromin. So you have TSC1 for hematin, TSC2 for tuberin, and NF1 for neurofibromin, which is a negative RAS regulator. Um, not very high yield, extremely high yield for you to realize that neurofibromin is type 1, it occurs due to a mutation in NF1 tumor on chromosome number 17. The way for you to realize is this disease is also called a von Recklinghausen disease, which is 17 words. And there are 17 words in von Recklinghausen, and um, the mutation occurs in chromosome number 17 on NF1 tumor suppressor gene. The same way uh, we try to remember that tuberous S is tuberous for eight, S another one word, so tuberous S are nine words, so tuberous TSC1 for nine, and tuberous sclerosis six for 16, and neurofibromatosis type one, also called von Recklinghausen disease, which is 17, which are 17 letters, does uh, the mutation occurs in chromosome number 17. Okay, so um, the question will present with 
one or two of the presentations over here. In most cases, it will present with cutaneous neurofibromas, which is uh, your uh, G over here. Uh, so you see that there are multiple cutaneous neurofibromas along with um, your cutaneous disease, which is your cafe alve spots, which are spots uh, which we can see normally, let's say in some caffeine drinks or like some mocha or something. So you see spots over there and this spot on the skin kind of resembles um, those kind of spots. So this is known as a cafe alve spots. There's nothing more or less to, to this. So this is uh, so the disease will, will usually present with uh, cutaneous neurofibromas along with cafe alve spots, and they will also also men, also mention that uh, the patient has uh, some intellectual disability, and very rarely will they uh, ask uh, or mention that the patient also has optic gliomas. This is more of a, uh, of, of a disease association. Um, when, uh, if you can try to remember that neurofibromatosis type one is associated with all optic gliomas, pheochromocytomas, and uh, sphenoid dysplasia, that's great. Very rarely will they try to make um, the question as hard by asking you disease associations of neurofibromatosis type one maybe one or two during the whole exam. But if they do, if you can't remember the optic glioma, pheochromocytomas, and uh, sphenoid dysplasia as disease associations, great, but it's not that high yield. The highest yields are your cutaneous neurofibromas, intellectual disability, and cafe LA spot. And they will test you to see if you know uh, the tumor suppressor gene chromosome number, which is your chromosome number 17, and also what it costs for, which is neurofibromin. Um, you can try to use the mnemonics over here, which is Cyclops, C-I-C-L-O-P-S-S, -S, which is for cafe alice spots, intellectual disability, cutaneous neurofibromas, leash nodules, uh, another dis uh, disease association, not very high yield, optic glioma, pheochromocytoma, seizures, and your bone lesions. So uh, I, I, I didn't really try to uh, remember the presentations with um, this mnemonic over here. I just tried to remember that uh, this disease presents with cathealia spots and cutaneous neurofibromas, and most of the time I got it right by remembering that it's a disease so, uh, in which uh, there is a mutation in neurofibromatosis type 1 on chromosome number 17. That's it. That's all I tried to remember. And uh, now let's move on to neurofibromatosis type 2. Okay, so neurofibromatosis type 2 is your uh, autosomal dominant disease, one of the most common neurocutaneous disorders. They will try to test you on Yosemite step 1. So uh, for this one, I tried to use the note portion of uh, the first aid, uh, which is given over here. That is, it affects two ears and two eyes. So by that, they mean that you have two ears, which is your bilateral vestibular schwannomas which is your neurological tumors and two eyes by that they mean juvenile cataract and uh in this one they will uh, try to test you by um by by asking that whether you know the associations of this disease or not and this disease association is comparatively high yield which is it's also associated with meningiomas and ependymomas so you, uh, it, it's it's basically pretty easy. That's why they ask you, and uh, it's very easy to get it right. So what I want you to remember is neurofibromatosis type two. Try to remember the word two for neurofibromatosis type two, which is two ears. Two by that two ears means two vestibular schwannomas, and two eyes, which means two juvenile cataracts, and uh, two more tumors, which are your meningiomas and your ependymomas. Now let's, um, so after, um, so, uh, although they will ask you for the disease associations uh, one or two times, but uh, the bigger chance of them asking you is the reason why neurofibromatosis type 2 occurs. And uh, this occurs due to your mutation on NF2 tumor suppressor gene on chromosome number 22. So NF2, try to remember the word 2, which is 2 ears, 2 eyes two more neurological tumors and the word 2-2, chromosome number 22. 
So you have your tuberous S, which is nine words, chromosome number nine, tuberous sclerosis 16 on chromosome number 16. Um, it's not six because TSC2 is bigger than TSC1, two is, better, two is bigger than one, so it won't be six. If it makes sense, it will be 16, tuberous sclerosis 16 and tuberous S. Then your neurofibromatosis type one, which is von reckling hausen 17 words for chromosome number 17. And neurofibromatosis type two, two, two for chromosome number 22. And um, the proteins associated with them are not high yield, but you have your hamertin, tuberin, TSC1, hamertin, TSC2, tuberin, um, NF1 for neurofibromin and NF2 for Merlin. Not important. They don't really ask you. And uh, the last disease is very easy and um, very, very high yield because uh, they will try to, um, because they know that it's easy to remember neurofibromatosis type 2 and von hippel lindau disease, along with all the other things which you have to remember for the US Assembly Step 1 exam. So they try to make things easy by asking questions from these two syndromes mostly. So if you can, don't try to skip out any um, information from these two, but for the ones on top, uh, if you can try to remember the high yield information I mentioned, it should be enough. So your von hippel lindau disease is your autosomal dominant disease. It occurs due to a deletion of VHL gene on chromosome 3P. So by 3P, they mean the short arm. P means the short arm of the, of the, of the chromosome. Q usually means the long arm. So this disease occurs due to a deletion, not a mutation. This occurs due to a deletion of VHL gene on chromosome number 3P, that is a short arm of chromosome number 3. I'm going to come to this sentence uh, after a while. Pretty high yield. Uh, let's, let's talk about the presentation of this disease first. The most common presentation for this disease is your renal cell carcinomas, hemangioblastoma, and uh, they will present a question with a patient where they will uh, mention one or two things which will lead you to realize that the patient has a renal cell carcinoma. And if they ask you what chromosomal um, disorder this patient might have, I want you to come to a diagnosis where you realize that they want you to know that they're talking about the von hippel lindau disease. And you and this disease occurs due to the deletion of VHL. VHL are three words, and this occurs on the short arm of chromosome number three. Chromosome number three, it's not very important to realize if it's the short arm or the long arm, but try to but just try to remember that um, this occurs due to a deletion on chromosome number three. So the, the disease presentations, um, I try to remember the presentations with the mnemonic given over here in the first aid note, which is your HARP, H-A-R-P, for hemangioblastomas, which, which are highly vascular tumors with a hyperchromatic nuclei, uh, which we can see in um, this picture over here, which is highly vascular, and you see your nucleus being hyperchromatic, which are, uh, which are um, the most... Um, I mean, which are the important um, things for you to realize that this type of uh, pathological report means that it's a hemangioblastoma. Uh, I will try to uh, talk more about hemangioblastomas in the adult uh, brain tumors, but uh, just for this disease, uh, let's try to realize, I mean, let's try to remember the mnemonic over here, HARP, which is hemangioblastoma, angiomatosis, bilateral renal cell carcinomas, and your pheochromocytomas. Okay, so um, most of the times, uh, most students could get a bit confused about um, renal angiomyolipoma and renal cell carcinomas. Uh, renal angiomyolipoma are your usually their benign tumors. So whenever they mention angiomyolipoma, I want you to uh, realize that they're that they don't that they're not asking about 
the von Hippel Lindau disease, they're directing you to tuberous sclerosis. But whenever they mention renal cell carcinomas, they are trying to direct you to a von Hippel Lindau disease, along with hemangioblastomas, not hematomas. So hematomas and renal angiomyelopoma for tuberous sclerosis, and hemangioblastomas and renal cell carcinoma for your von Hippel Lindau disease. Okay. So that's more or less it. Uh, if we try to do a quick review, then you have your five neurocutaneous disorders, Sturge Weber, which occurs due to somatic uh, due to the somatic mosaicism of an activating mutation in one copy of the GNAQ genes. The first sentence is not that high yield because there are other diseases um, uh, which occurs due to congenital non heritability anomaly of a neurocrest derivative. So this is your uh, most common answer and your reason for Sturge Weber syndrome. And the disease presentation is your ipsilateral leptomeningeal angioma, which they will not mention. They will, me they will mention seizure and epilepsy and intellectual disability, along with um, a port wine stain along the ophthalmic and maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The next one is your tuberous sclerosis, which occurs due to uh, mutation in tumor suppressor genes, not a deletion mutation in tumor suppressor gene. DSC1, tuberous S, nine words, chromosome number nine, tuberous sclerosis six for chromosome number 16. And then you have your common presentations, which is your renal angiomyelopoma, hematomas, disease associations, not that high yield, but if you can try to remember that it's associated with mitral regurgitation and cardiac rhabdomyoma. And, and your most obvious uh, actually spots which are this hypopigmented uh, patches over here. Uh, next one is your neurofibromatosis type 1. Quick review. Um, you have this disease is also called a von reckling hausen disease, which are 17 words, thus chrom on chromosome number 17. Most two common presentations are your cutaneous neurofibromas and uh, cafe al spots. Next is neurofibromatosis type 2. Try, uh, try to remember the word 2 for two uh, ears, which, which are bilateral vestibular schwannomas. Um, they might try to give like some kind of a CT scan or an MRI where, where they will make it very obvious that the patient has bilateral vestibular schwannomas and uh, the patient also presents with cataracts. So uh, I want you to realize that they are directing you to a neurofibromatosis type 2. They'll ask you why this occurs. This occurs due to mutation in NF2 on chromosome number 22. They won't ask you what this uh, what this codes for, what protein this codes for. But if they do, they'll start to remember that they code for the protein Merlin. The next one is von hippel lindau disease. Uh, most common presentations are your renal cell carcinomas and hemangioblastoma and uh, try to re remember that hemangioblastomas may occur in mostly in doctors and brains but it could also occur in your retina stem cerebral uh, cerebellum and spine and um, try to remember the mnemonic over here which is harp hemangioblastoma angiomatosis renal cell carcinoma for your homocytoma and it's very easy to realize that von hippel lindau disease are VHL3 words. So uh, this occurs due to a deletion, not a mutation. The only um, deletion in this whole neurocutaneous disorder chart is your von hippel lindau disease. Most of them are mutation. Uh, even uh, somatic mosaicism is a post-zygotic mutation. Tuberous sclerosis is a mutation, mutation, mutation. And this one is a deletion on von hippel uh, on your chromosome, chromosome number three. And the last thing is if they try to make this, um, this uh, if they try to make the question very hard, then they might also give in the answer stem this sentence over here, which is um, the short arm of VHL, ubiqu ubiquitinates, hypoxia, inducible factor 1A, so um, this is not very high yield, but I have I have received one or two questions where um, I saw this answer, and um, 
so just if if it's possible after after remembering all the information for von Hippolindo, if you can try to remember that this goes through a process of ubiquitinization and uh, this is responsible for the ubiquitinization for hypoxic hypoxia inducible factor 1a and uh, due to the fact that this gets deleted uh, the patient presents with your harp presentations which are your hemangioblastomas renal cell carcinomas and pheochromocytomas so that's about it i uh, hope this helps um, and uh, if there is any other topic that you want me to cover please let me know and best of luck